impacting more than half of the country right now. So what's behind these extreme temperatures? Kim Cobb is a climate, sci climate scientist who is closely monitoring global climate changes, and she's the director of the Global Change Program at Georgia Tech and also was the lead author of that recent UN report on climate change globally and some of the dangers that we're facing. We appreciate your time tonight, Kim. Well, thanks for having me. So extreme heat. Fires, drought, as Albert just said, 34 states under heat advisory, excessive heat warnings. How can we tell if these events are the result of natural climate change or the result of people, of us, and what we're putting out in the environment? Well, we have to turn to the science to answer that kind of question. And thankfully, uh, we just have a new report out from the United Nations Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, a report that was three years in the making, participated in by hundreds of scientists around the world who collectively digested more than 14,000 individual studies to help answer that question. What the report is very conclusive about is that humans are warming the planet. This is not really news. We've known about this for over 30 years. What is new about the report are strong physical links between this ongoing warming and any number of different weather and climate extremes, including heat waves over land and in the ocean, drought, extreme rainfall, and even fire-prone weather. Uh, that's the bad news because for every increment of additional warming we will uh, let slip, uh, we're going to experience an increase in these kinds of extremes going forward. I read much of that report today and something stuck out to me. I mean, it is a dire report in terms of global warming and some of the consequences. The UN Secretary General even calling it a code red for humanity. But are you concerned that that type of warning uh, could backfire, is counterproductive when people hear that and think, well, maybe it's too late, there's nothing we can do? Well, certainly there is fear that people become overwhelmed and don't appreciate just what's at stake right now. This report does clearly lay out that every region of the world is already being impacted by extreme heat and many other types of climate extremes and that this will get worse. But it also clearly outlines that we have choices to make in the very near term. They would either lock in additional warming through 2050 uh, to the tune of another degree Celsius, double what we already have done over the last century, just in the next decades, or keep that warming to 1.5 five degrees in line with the most ambitious targets from the Paris Agreement and minimize the damages and the risk that we have to deal with over the next uh, couple decades. And beyond that, if we keep that lowest emissions trajectory, we reserve the right to begin cooling the planet later this century. So that's what's at stake right now. So instead of uh, taking the uh, throw up our hands, it's too late approach, we should look to the science to understand exactly what could happen in the futures that we're choosing, knowingly or not, uh, with our emissions reductions choices over the next decade or two. And in addition to science, can technology rescue us? Is there a way to intervene and reverse some of the effects that we're seeing technologically? Well, certainly technology has already advanced to the point that all the solutions that we need to deploy to reverse global warming are at our fingertips. This has been the result of countless studies, including something called Project Drawdown, uh, the top 100 solutions to reverse global warming, identifying uh, already here solutions. Of course, technology could advance further and help us unlock a greater capacity uh, to accelerate those emissions reductions. But it's really important for America Americans to hear that we have what we need to get going. And indeed, this transition is already upon us. Uh, we need to move aggressively to enact uh, federal policies that will hasten this transition to our low carbon future, uh, provide a greater equity across this country, and make sure that we're reducing the harmful threats of air pollution that so many communities grapple with from our dependence on fossil fuels. That so many play a role in protecting our planet and the future of our planet. Kim Cobb, the director of the Global Change Program at Georgia Tech. Thank you tonight. We appreciate it. Thanks for having me.